Good morning everyone, it's Lynn. Um, I just thought I'd come on today and um, do a quick little peek through my bead box. Bead boxes. I actually have three, but one of them's basically just a miscellaneous um, pieces I haven't done anything with yet. Here's a uh, cute little robin's egg. And this is just done with the original Sculpey. Tiki head. And this is actually from a piece of broken jewelry. It's a mold from a piece of broken jewelry. Um, these, of course, are the Just Face It Faces. I've done a bunch of these, given some away, and there's a video a ways back, if y'all didn't get a chance to see any of those. Okay. And then there's just some blank ones also. Okay, let's see what else is there. Mm, this is just a jumble of just miscellaneous pieces. Just to pull out and embellish pages or whatever. These are some more of those hearts like I did on the cover of Neri's uh, Keys to Your Heart mini album. So I can paint those up any color and do any kind of finish on them I want to. So they're just, again, out of that um, Sculpey original that I get at Walmart. And what I like about it for things like charms and stuff is the texture of it is a little... Hmm, it almost has a texture on the surface like it's been gessoed. It's got that little tiny bit of grittiness, even though it's not really... And, of course, if you sand it, it'll be nice and smooth, but it holds the acrylic paint really well. These are those little... These are my little cherub guys from my broken cherub. And they took a mold of his face. Just a quick little bead uh, bracelet I threw together with some beads that I made. A little piece of detail from a mirror frame that I took. <laughs> a skull that I made and then I made a mold of it. Here's one painted. And then not painted. Let's see. A little ghosty. He's like on the charm bracelet. There's a lot of those. Let's see if there's anything else interesting in here. Sorry if I'm jiggling y'all around. This is just a bin of earrings. A little candy cane stripe kind of earring. And this is like a little faux alabaster. Come on, camera. These are those glitter beads. That I'll try to do a little quick tutorial on those here after a bit. Super, super nice technique because the glitter does not come off on you. It's This is a smooth, sealed bead. But it's so sparkly. And I love sparkly! These are actually some purchased beads that I just thought were pretty. So. There we have good ones. Alright, last one over here. Oh, this is... <laughs> I picked this up out of the floor because my grandson had them all. They're, they're like faux geode slices, and this is the end of the this was the end of the cane, so to speak. And I don't do caning really, but there's a whole there's a whole bunch of different ones of these, different colors, different uh, tons of them. I don't know where they're at. My grandson got them strode out. They're probably in the bottom of the toy box. And this is some of those little. Uh, steampunky art tiles that I've done a whole bunch of letters on those letters in those <laughs> some little uh, faux raku owl beads that I made 
Alright, that's basically the end of box one. Ah, and this is my, and this is the bo second box. This one's mainly my stones that I've done. And I, I basically make three tops. This is a, I call this a pearl stone for obvious reasons, because it's mainly made up of pearl clays. A little bit of transparent clay and different colors of pearl clays. In contrast, this is a glitter stone made up of different transparent clays and glitter. As you can see the back, sorry for blinding you, that's what the stone will look at like when it first comes out of the oven. It's completely covered with glitter. And so it takes a lot of sanding and polishing to get it down to where it looks like that. I'm going to start throwing these up here and get them out of the way a little bit. And this is another out of that same mix, actually, that I just did in a different shape. And word of warning, see the black bit right there? I had this sitting on my desk when I was doing an antiquing <laughs> on a different piece and a drop of that antiquing medium dropped on there and of course leached right into the clay because at the time it was not sealed. So it's got a little dark streak in it but I still like it. So in the red in the red bit I did quite a few different uh, this is a mix. Now this is a pearl stone that has a mix of the glitter and transparent clays in it. And this is also. Okay, and the rest of the box I'll try to go through a little bit quicker y'all. Sorry about that. Um, if y'all notice that I haven't been around as much, I'm very sorry. I'm like so way behind on watching videos that it's insane. So if you miss me commenting a little bit, it's only because I'm trying, trying, trying to catch up. So I apologize. Here is another one of the, this is actually I showed in one of the other videos, but um, this is where you take pearl clay. What you do is, not to give away a trade secret, but what you do is you chop it up into little pieces, and then I take a Ziploc baggie, and I just dunk it in there, the whole chopped up little bits. And this in particular is, well, this color in particular may not be, but I love the Martha Stewart glitters because they're heat safe. And if you use a, a glitter that's not heat safe, It'll do what I call porcupine. It'll poke up through your through your clay. It'll leave little pokey bits sticking up. And you can sand it off, but it just doesn't leave the iridescence on the glitter like this does. This is actually one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> Love it. And then another example, a little heart one. Now you can do this with all different colors. It doesn't have to be the white pearl clay. These were just... Uh, some of my first pieces I did with this technique after I after I developed it I have uh, I, I, I'm gonna say I didn't see it anywhere so I saw some other techniques people did using paint where you can chop your clay up and then cover it with acrylic paint and then you mush it back together and then make your shape bake it and sand off the paint that's on the outside I didn't have any luck with that actually I couldn't get my clay to stick back together very good, and the, cl the paint just seemed to be stringy and sticky, and I, I didn't like the technique at all, so um, my light bulb went off, and I thought, hey, what about glitter? And the one that I saw in particular, she was doing, I think, a, maybe a, uh, a faux turquoise, and with the black veining, and of course, I right away tried the same faux turquoise using turquoise clay and black 
glitter. And it turned out gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. My mother has the piece that I made uh, herself. So This is like a faux malachite. Again, just done with layering clays and then manipulating the layers before you slice it. And uh, you can see the glitter in there. It's really pretty. Let's see. A scarab that I made. Another one of the glitter stones. And there's the back. This is the back of the uh, another piece of the glitter stone. And this is done with some of the Martha Stewart leaf glitter also. These big bigger chunks. And I love that stuff. Kudos to Martha for the glitter, because I love it. Comes in so many pretty colors. Another glitter stone with a lot more of the transparent done in just the clear that it comes in, not not uh, mixing any color with it. And this one's got gold glitter in it. Kind of trying to simulate a little bit of the uh, Lapis. Ooh, love that. I'm a sparkly girl. Love it. I know, I could sit here and look at them just because of the sparkle. <laughs> I'm probably driving y'all crazy. Okay, and this is supposed to be like a faux, um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, shell. Not abalone, but the other one. Yeah, it'll come to me after I turn the video off. So that's what that is. And I probably got another piece of that somewhere. Oh, and here's the faux abalone. I'm sorry, the pearlescence is not going to show up very well. It's so pearly and pretty. Okay, I've turned it every way. Couldn't help you. <laughs> Purple. And a lot of times when I make these, I make, you know, matching beads to go with. I'm trying to show you all these as a precursor to I'm going to upload a two-part video showing some of my jewelry and pendants. Pendants ma mainly. I only like to do one of a kind. I'm one of those crazy people that I get bored too easy. So I'll do it once and then I'll, okay, I'm done. I'm on to something else. <laughs> Drives my husband crazy. So, these are one of the first ones that I did after I did that turquoise that I was talking about. And these are not glazed in any way. This is just the polish um, after the sanding. And they've probably only been polished once because you can bring up quite a bit more shine than that. Well, they've been in the box forever also, so. Again, these has some flat beads to go with. And this is another uh, design done where you um, manipulate the layers after you've made your little uh, sandwich of, of layers. And you manipulate it and then slice it and it gets uh, all these different wonderful okay i'm gonna get cut off again so man i don't want the bead boxes to turn into two parts but if it does i apologize all right okay i think this is where i was now this is just a mix, obviously, of um, some marbleized colors, you know. And a little egg done with a little purple, lavender, marbleized. It's made to go with that stone. And there's a couple more little beads. And I already showed these. I made it part way down. Again, done with the, the Martha Stewart leaf glitter and some other different glitters and a lot of transparent clays in this one.
Let's see, these were, I was doing some, um, like worry stones. My grandfather always carried a worry stone, I've told this story before. And so I was just trying to make some things to, good luck pieces, and I actually did these last year and gave them away to the guys at Christmas. So, like, um, one of my brother-in-laws, I made his a baseball because he loves baseball. And so I just made it a round disc baseball and it was really really cute. So I did those. And this again is just a little m mishmash kind of pieces that have never been finished. I, I loved this piece when I made it and I still do but the yellow is not very bright, and so I just haven't I haven't been able to come up with what I want to use it in. I love the piece, but where's the back? Like I said, I just don't know what I want to do with it. So. That's just some turquoise. A little bit of turquoise transparent mixed with some regular transparent banded. It's another piece of that same clay. That I just did an engraving of a spiral and then I antiqued it. And that's a piece off of broken jewelry that I haven't finished. It's actually a too coy. There we go. Um, a little piece I was doing some faux amber, and this was just the scrap that I had left. And another same piece of that transparent. Turquoise. These were going to be some zipper pools that I never finished. There's quite a few pieces that shape. Just a coin. It's actually made from a, a little brass charm, you know, a little hollow brass charm. Another one of those zipper pulls. Make me angry because I cannot find my die for my tag. This is my tag that I hang from my jewelry. Can't find it anywhere. There's another one. Well, that's good to know. I have two. No idea what I did with it. These are another I'm so sorry. Another technique done with that liquid polymer clay. And look, I even have it handy. And I'm assuming <laughs> I'm assuming this stuff is still available. I know that there are other companies besides the Sculpey that makes it. But I have a big bottle. And you know, it's about half empty. So, I've used it a bit. But you do the clay, and um, I just did a rubber stamp impression in this one. And I think I baked these first. I do believe I actually baked these first. And then I mixed some of that transparent clay with just a little bit of Perlex powder, and, and uh, I believe that's the spring green. And then you put a thin layer on there, and of course it settles into the recesses and really makes it look like a glazed ceramic. Love those. I love those. Here was the first piece I did, actually. And then these bunch of little, just little charms that I made. I don't know if you can tell that one's a Christmas tree. That one just has a pattern on it. Here we go. These are a tiny little bitty seahorse charm that I have. I just impressed in there. I thought they turned out really cute. Um, here's the blue Poa shell. These are also done with the transparent liquid Sculpey. Oh, just another piece. 
as you can see, the possibilities with this polymer clay are oops, sorry, endless. I am addicted just because of the different finishes. I love faux finishes. And this last compartment, really quick before I get cut off, is just accessory beads. These are some faux jade accessory beads to go with a piece. Just some pieces. Just some pieces I stamped into there. These, I uh, baked the bead, and while the bead was hot, I drizzled this liquid polymer clay on there. And then heat, heated it with my heat gun to finish curing it. Those were a little difficult, but I love the way they turned out. Just some little lentil beads. Some scrap, <laughs> some scrap beads. Some more of those impressed with a rubber stamp. Got a few of those, different shapes. And these are some cross cut, you know, you roll a snake out and then diagonal cut them. And I don't know if it's going to show, but they actually have a really neat... Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. <laughs> they have a really neat spiral design in there, and these some more... OJ beads to go with a piece. And of course these don't have the finish on them. If they're, once they're finished they'll look a little more realistic. But that's it y'all. I just wanted to come on real quick and show y'all those before I do any more tutorials or anything. Give y'all a chance to ask any questions. It's ones you want to see in particular. Okay, sorry about that. You know it cut me off again. So just to look through my bead boxes. These are some uh, pieces that uh, I just finished wire wrapping. This is an earlier piece done with a little bit different technique. Where you roll out the transparent clay really thin and then you add your glitter and your other colored clays. And you roll it up in kind of a jelly roll kind of a affair there. And um, that's how you get that look. This has got the Martha Stewart leaf glitter in it too, and some other, and some other glitters. This piece is uh, one of the glitter stones, and I've rolled out a little bit of the clay that I had left into a snake, and then I spiraled it a little bit, and that's how I got that. The end of it, I cut off a section, you know, an inch or so, and when I did, I squashed it flat, and that is this piece. So. Basically, yay, like that is how it would have come off there. So, even though the end of it doesn't really, well, it kind of does. This is the very tip end that is completely unfinished. And like I was saying, they're completely covered with glitter when they first start out. So, it takes a lot of work to get to there. This I've just saved will probably be a flower center or something like that. There you can see the middle the actual stone. And this is just uh, some different colored pearl pow uh, pearl powders, pearl clays that I've made like a faux sea urchin spine. A little wire wrapping on the top. This piece just came out of the oven. Sorry for my mirror there. Hmm. Who doesn't love that? Love the Christmas trees or the winter trees. You know, down here in my part of Texas, you get oak trees, mesquite trees, or cedar trees. That's it. We don't have any. We don't have any forests that look like that. So I put a little bit of. And I made this one. I'll, I'll possibly come back and do a tutorial if y'all are interested in seeing how I did this one. Um, I'll just put some jump rings right here between my bracket and my frame. Now, this will all be painted and antiqued, the framing. But this has just got clear embossing powder in the middle. And I actually put it on there and baked it with the clay. And it was powdered and granular when it started out. And now, of course, as it's come out, it's all perfect. And yes, the towel is still a bit warm. So, there's the walk through my bead box, everybody. If y'all have any questions, feel free to ask. I, uh... I basically just am self-taught. I didn't have internet when I started. So I just started out just playing around. 
I'd go over to my mother's occasionally and see a video or something on on YouTube, and uh, just playing around with it. Came up with my own my own designs and my own style. So uh, I don't mind showing anybody anything of what I do. So ask away. Feel free to ask away. It clay is such fun, and I think more people should definitely get into it. So. Anybody who's interested, let me know. I uh, don't mind doing a video. Show you what I know. I'll come back with uh, way too long and way too much rambling. Just like this one. <laughs> of some of my finished pieces. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Y'all are uh, y'all are really great. I appreciate y'all's wonderful comments and uh, the, the interest. Seriously, if y'all want to learn anything about polymer clay, feel free to ask me. Alright, thanks everybody. Bye now.